if you're struggling with weight issues. Experts will tell you, well, it's all your fault. You're eating too much and moving too little. Your response might be, oh, I'm not overeating. But of course, no one believes you. So, are people with weight issues really that bad? Well, a careful analysis of the eating and exercise habits of people with weight issues suggests that more often than not, they're not doing anything different from everyone else. So, it must be bad genes. Well, genes do matter, but the bad genes argument doesn't really explain the current obesity epidemic. Your genes are not that different from previous generations who were not fat. So, it cannot be genes alone. It's genes plus something. Now, the biology implicates insulin as the something. Now, when most people hear the word insulin, they're thinking insulin deficiency. Not having enough is a health crisis. It causes sugar levels to spike and high sugar, that is hyperglycemia, is seriously damaging. So, for anyone with diabetes or prediabetes, having more insulin is the objective. This makes sense for the type 1 diabetic. Insulin is missing. But it does seem a little odd for the type 2 diabetic because insulin levels are actually in the stratosphere. This phenomenon is referred to as hyperinsulinemia. Insulin resistance is blamed for the problem. In a nutshell, insulin is running around like a madman, trying to get cells to open up their glucose gates so that they take up the glucose. But no one is listening. The body's response to this defiant behavior of the cells is to yell louder, and more insulin is pumped out, hence the hyperinsulinemia. Hyperinsulinemia is the consequence, or is it? What comes first? This is what a group of Chinese researchers wondered. Now, one of the problems with looking at what is going on in metabolically challenged adults is it's complicated. First off, metabolic problems take years to develop. And if you're looking when things have gone wrong, it's difficult to establish where things went wrong first because the body is a dynamic system. If something goes wrong in one place, the entire system shifts. This is why anyone with metabolic problems has anomalies in pretty much every part of their metabolism. Aish. So... The researchers decided to look at the situation in healthy five-year-olds rather than in adults. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we look for clues as to what makes five-year-olds pack on the pounds. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, the scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, this study took place in the Longnan district in Dakwang City. Normal weight five-year-olds were signed up in 1999. Now, this is forever ago, but this is why the majority of the five-year-olds were in fact normal weight. These kids kids at the cusp of the obesity epidemic in China. For the record, 13.6% of the little ones were overweight and 7% were underweight. Now, all the kids, a total of 424, 211 boys and 213 girls, were studied as 5-year-olds and then 5 years later as 10-year-olds. 
The parameters that were studied included the, the obvious things, weight and height, along with fasting insulin and glucose. This data was then used to calculate the level of insulin resistance. To complement the biological measurements, parents were asked to report on the TV watching habits as a proxy for physical activity. So, what did they find? Well, more insulin resulted in bigger kids. The weight of each child at the age of 10 was very much related to fasting insulin levels at the age of 5. Kids who were producing lots of insulin at 5, as reflected by their fasting insulin level, had put on more kilos. And the pattern held for both boys and girls. And TV watching? Well, it had nothing to do with the weight gain in the five-year time frame, nor did the starting weight. Neither birth weight or the weight at the age of five were terribly predictive of weight status at the age of 10. Insulin was the culprit. Now, it kind of makes sense because insulin's job is to put away the groceries after you eat. The more insulin you have, the more efficiently the storage process will proceed. Now, this study made no attempt to establish why the insulin response varied between kids. Genetics is probably a big part of the story, but unlikely to be the whole story. We are all different, and our insulin response is just another part of our uniqueness. Being an insulin hyper-responder would have been a superpower in the past. You would have been able to grow big and strong in lean times, and being bigger and stronger than your less gifted neighbors would have given you an advantage. But uh, it has the potential to become problematic in the wrong environment. So, what is the wrong environment? An environment that promotes lots of insulin secretion. Because you're gifted. You'll produce more insulin and you'll store more fat. So, what promotes lots of insulin secretion? Eating. Ouch. You can't stop eating permanently. But... You can eat in such a way as to minimize that insulin response. Some foods are more insulinogenic, that is, they cause more insulin to be released than others. As a rule, carbs get insulin really excited, particularly fast carbs, that is, carbs that arrive in your body very quickly. The types of food that do this are often processed or refined foods like cakes and cookies and soda. But some real foods do this too, including milk and potatoes. If you are insulin gifted, these are the foods that you should cut back on. For more tips and strategies that will help you manage your gift, that is Rain in Insulin, download the free Willpower Reports. You can find the link in the description below. It will introduce you to the Candy Floss system and help you create better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not high. Know someone who is insulin gifted share this video with them so they understand where their weight problems begin and how to manage them. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.